hurricane, hurricane. And uh, we're getting a little diesel fuel. We got some people taking pictures of the truck. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Honda Dave is coming to pick up this little motorcycle. And then uh, we're gonna head on up and drop the cylinder head off pick up the rebuilt one and then we're gonna go see cousin Paul so stay tuned these guys are smiling already I was just saying I wonder what he's even driving you wonder what I'm driving well you should know better, I should know better. you should know better look Yo, that's a... let's turn and burn this what do you think yeah turn and burn should I pick up the side of your truck <laughs> You, uh, off. you may just want to take it over to the dumpster and just toss it no, in. No, you said this is a good it. core, right? Yeah, well, uh, I'll let you look at how many cracks are. It's the worst one I've ever seen. Oh, well, let me just say that. Let's check her out. Oh, it's still warm. It's like you just got it off the... It's still warm because it's been sitting outside. It's like you just got it off the boat. You just took it off the boat. So what causes this is maybe a little EGTs. That's exhaust gas. Let's talk about this. Exhaust gas so, temperature. What we got is we got some really bad cracking going on. It's really hard to see. You can see a crack right there that comes all the way in. Like we don't even got a maggot. We can see the crack. There's a really good one. Like these ones right here, if you see this crack goes all the way up into the, yeah, the port. Yeah, over here. I mean, you're not gonna like leak coolant. This thing's not leaking coolant and stuff, but you're not sealing on the valves very good. But as Merlin showed you guys, one of the valves wasn't even closed at all. So, and it this, still, and it still this, ran. Look at, look at, the, look at the cracks in there. Look at the seat. Look at, that's yeah. got so many cracks in there that I almost think that, <laughs> that the, this is what the valve looked like in there at full throttle. <laughs> It was, a, it was a flapper, <laughs> no, not a... Uh, it was flapping uh, like this. Oh, that's awesome. So, you guys want to know, there is a way that we deal with these kind of heads. Like, everybody thinks, oh, we throw them away, we junk them out or whatever, but we can't actually use these because there's something we, we actually do with this to fix. So, let me show you how we deal with cores that come into us like this. That one doesn't want to die. Missed. <laughs> sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. <laughs> okay, so it's obviously Dustin, uh, he wants to recycle that. And honestly, I didn't even want to bring it to him. I told him, I said, dude, this thing's got cracks in it, like it's really bad. He goes, ah, bring it to me. Sometimes they're usable, but he confirmed what I kind of suspected, um, that they're critical cracks through the injector holes. You don't want to use those. They're going to grow into a coolant leak. Small cracks around the exhaust seat, they're normal. He can deal with them. He can machine them and he'll make them run. But for what I'm doing with this thing, no way. And he doesn't want this going to a customer and having problems down the road. But it's obvious I'm not alone. This is not even a lot. You should see when the, we just barely dumped this thing. It looks like mostly junk to me. Do you want that block? Yeah, I want to take this thing and try to get it apart. We can dig it out of there. I mean, it's rusty, but... Oil pump on it. The only thing that concerns me about this... Yeah. This I think a, the crank is toast in it, to this be honest is a with no, you. No, fram oil. So what are we doing to my hot rod cylinder head here? We are CNC pointing it. Spin that dial like it's the price is right. There you go. You're running. That's it, huh? That's pretty trick. This is, so this is the top secret program here. Oh, very top secret. So this is this is what we're doing here. Yep. That's the 
That's the middle. shape we're going to make them two ports. This is intake. Correct. This is exhaust. Correct. Because the intake, you only have so much reach with that bit, right? With the manifold on, yes. Where we don't have an exhaust manifold on. But so, this is a lot of material to remove by hand. Yeah. Like, it only takes us about four hours to do a head like this, about 40 minutes per cylinder. Okay. And then another four hours of hand blending right. to get the rough casting and the CNC port to, to get blend the blend. together. Right. Okay. So, so there's there's easily, on a 12 valve head, there's eight hours of just import work. work. Just import work. Yep. Now, on your 24 valves and some of your Duramax stuff, do you offer this same yep. program? Like, I mean, I know it's every a head program. that comes through here can have this done to it. Okay. We don't do this to every single head because that would be right. a huge investment, right. man hours. Right. This is for guys. This is for guys that want to spend the extra money and get all they can out of right. their right. stock configuration. Yeah, So we're four hours in yep. on a machine. Now what are we doing? We're getting ready for four hours more. Hand four blending. hours of hand porting and hand blending. Yes, sir. Well, that's pretty trick. So you got a light down the vacuum tube. Yep. So you got, oh, that's pretty cool. So those shadows, you can actually see shadows in there when you're grinding. That's the whole point. And, uh, Old trick, I like it. All right, so this is just roughly carbided. You can see in this hole how we've got all of these sharp edges, all of the rough casting meeting the CNC. Then you can see in this hole where we blended all of that rough casting into the CNC and there's no sharp edges and everything is all smooth and bubbly. That's what we're going for. Do you finish it out with an abrasive? Yes. Once we're finished okay. with the carbide, we'll just come through and roll off it with these guys. Okay. So we've got the half inch and three eighths to get in different places. And that gives it that final. Yep. Really nice sanded finish. Yep. So normally when you do this, do you go all your exhaust ports first, then yes. you come back on your intakes? That way you're just... Yep. That way you're... you're just consistency and you're just going down the line. Yes. And then you're not setting up and setting up yeah. and setting up. Making a assembly line production out of it. Yes, sir. That's awesome. USA. Oh, now that's cheating. I already know what you're going to do. You're going to put this over the intake plate, and you're going to pull out one hole, and you're going to grind all the rest of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he's going to cap oh. that hole. Yeah, it doesn't slide your head on the floor. So that piece of plastic will cap the inlet for 
the intake. And then his vacuum system will pull on one intake port and he can grind on the other and his metal shavings are recovered. Yes, sir. So the intake's a little more tricky because uh, you can only reach it from one side, right? What do you mean? So you can't really reach it from up in here. Correct. So we only get to it from one side, yes. Exactly. Unless you do the cutaway, and then that's a different porting, right? Correct. That's a full race. Yeah. This is kind of a street race. Which is another thing that we can do, but we don't. We don't do all the time. Oh, that's right. That's what this one. So those are your seals for the other intake ports. Yep. Just old junk valves. Love it. These don't look like junk. These look like good valves. They're junk though, huh? I was told I could use them in here, so they weren't useful <laughs> elsewhere. So to me, that means they're junk. They're junk. <laughs> Some reason. I don't. So now you've cut it for valve guides. What are you doing here? We're going to take these stupid freeze plugs out and put in a nice threaded plug. Yeah, so anybody who's ever boosted one of these past about 50 pounds, they know about these plugs. Because they usually, as easy as he turned them sideways, they come right out. And all of your coolant comes right out, all over everything. <laughs> These guys have got all the bugs worked out on this, so if you ever wanted to do this, you just send your head to industrial. It's gonna come back in a nice little wooden box, all wrapped up with a bow on top, and all of this process has been done. Because you can't tap all the way through, otherwise right. the plug's just gonna go straight in. Right, it has to, so this is a basically a, a deadheaded tap. So it got, so you put what kind of sealer? You put some kind of sealer on there? We put just some uh, Loctite or yeah, okay. Yeah. Some of your silicone yep. molly silicone. Yeah. High damp shield. That tap sharp. Yeah, it is. It, it goes right a half a turn when you hit stop. Yeah, it goes right down in there and doesn't even hesitate. That's pretty cool though. That's a that's an important process because once you've had one of these come out, I don't care what you do, you can't keep it in. There ain't nothing gonna hold it in the hole. I don't know if Cummins put them in when they were 500 degrees and they heat seized on them or what, but. Once you once you can tap another one in, it ain't never staying in. Never it's coming back there. in. They never stay in. Yeah, you almost have to JB weld them in to get them to stay. Now the cylinder head's gonna get the plugs put in it and then it goes for pressure test from here? Yep. So because of all the porting they've done, all the machine work they've done up to this point, now what they're gonna do is put those plugs in on there. That way they can coolant pressure test it to make sure there's no hidden cracks that they uncovered or something that they missed. That way it can proceed on with the rest of the machine work process. What are we doing, Brighton? All right, we're gonna pressure test your head now. We just got uh, your plug. These are our plugs that we drill and tap. Yeah, we uh, we filmed that little process because uh, have you ever taken those out and had them and put them back in and had them blow out? No. Yeah, it's no. a it's a coolant bath. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's not good. Anyways, we're so gonna... what are you doing here? You're gonna bolt this thing down to this plate. This Obviously, plate. this is the seal for the cylinder block head, everything. Right. It's got a big piece of rubber on it that okay. seals it shut. And then we're gonna hook it up to the air here at about 40 pounds and see and if it, the air is gonna go in here. Obviously, plug yep. this. And There's here. plugs here, right? There's yep. two here that's gotta we'll be plugged. We'll have to plug back here. 
Okay. Like this one, and then the air hooks up right here. Cool. Let's let's hook it up and do it. turn before it breaks. Mm -hmm. If this if this passes the pressure test, then it's off to what? Have guide installed and then final machine. Yep, then we'll go and install the guides, hone the guides to size, and then we'll mill it, cut the seats, and then fire it. Actually, it may not smoke as bad now because it's going to get more air. So I bet we you'll may notice have to, a difference. We may have to add more fuel. Yeah, we know how to do that. To too. make a, yeah, exactly. The diesel. Okay. I'm excited for you to get this head on your boat because I want to see what you feel the difference. Like, well, because so, of the truck, we did it on your little mini semi. But right. You're still but in I didn't. The I didn't get to. It. I didn't get to test and, yeah, it. Yeah. Even even if even if you got it running, after. you don't know. Like this is yeah. this is going to give me a true before and after. Yeah. The cool thing with my boat is the, the before and after test, and uh, I have a big performance turbo on it. Yeah. And I have yeah. a lot of fuel going to it, so it's going to show up. I know, up. I wish you would have let me put bigger valves in. What do we need bigger valves for? Just, for just the top end. The top end. I had a, it don't need no more top end. It has I want to see 120 end. miles an hour. 120? Yeah. Dude, when you I want to be I want to be those two bobbers going across that lake. When, <laughs> when Dustin rides in this boat, 80, he's going to be like, <laughs> let me out. Let me slow out. down. I've had enough. We did a buck 20 on that 50 foot skater. Dude, you're down in. And you, it was you could, scary. So I'm only you could read a book like this thing. You're sitting on a surfboard <laughs> and you're like, the life jacket is your only preservation. And most Okay, so you got your regulator set at what? 16 psi? Uh, no, 38 and a half. 30. Okay, that's good because my boat does run some pressure. The coolant only is at like 16. Yeah, yeah that's what like usually radiator comes well, on a pickup truck right. or something. But but we usually really we'll test them at, at okay. 50 so or 60. here's a theory: if a radiator cap is 16 pounds, bright, uh -huh. why does it blow these plugs out? It should vent at 16 pounds, right? Because it's not inside these plugs is a cavity and when there's not air in there it steams but how about the plugs how about the plugs on the side of the ball have you ever spit yeah. those big old freeze oh, plugs yeah. out oh, my yeah. boat spit them out the <laughs> first time i run it yeah <laughs> hey, bunk, 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 bunk. <laughs> like what was that it was all the freeze plugs coming out of the motor wow yeah so Cavitation. yeah I think it's just head gasket leak. It leaks so much that the, the cap can't bend it, yeah. honestly. Like, it, ooh, I see bubbles. Hopefully you see bubbles, because there should be some air in it for a minute. Yep. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say this one's not gonna leak. Wow. Which is a good thing, because we've got about like uh, $1,500 into this head at this point. So <laughs> there's more than there more there's more than 15 man hours alone oh, in yeah. this head right now right now yeah. yeah and it's it's barely halfway through its whole yeah. process yeah. what what sucks is after it's gotten eight hours of porting done and hand porting and then it leaks in this porting. yeah that's that's depressing that's what so like i said before i was going to give you some stats i've been here for five years in this machine shop randy ran okay. this machine shop for 40 years I think maybe since I've been here in five years, I've seen one come out of the porting machine or hand blending process that was a problem that we had ported too far. Okay. That we had messed up. And, well, and there was one that was had casting a, shift. Yeah, casting well, shift. exactly. You know what I mean? So, right. so, so we could explain what casting shift is. Yeah. But so casting shift basically where Cummins built this head. Uh, had one of their fan foundries build this. We all know that they don't build every single head in the same spot using the exact same tooling and the castings are not all the same. They'll have them coming from different forging plants and stuff. So they have a spec they have to hit. So the sand cast or the, the mold might be a little different on this batch than the, the next batch. And so you can have a, you know upwards of 20 to 40, 50 thousandths difference of casting shift through the passages that's that's a little extreme and so we'll come in and, and we'll 
port one out and leave a lot of extra space and then we hand blend it you know where we where we are but they're all they're all consistent and pretty good like i said we have yeah, one so that, that we did that was probably just because the casting shift in that spot we we hand ported it just like normal right and it ended up you know yeah it ended up being, being too much being and having a leak yep but well, as you can see our biggest thing here that we're checking is that our screw in plugs that we put in are not leaking yes no. um it, it's very very uncommon to see a, a port leak or or something like that on our porting side of it you know we just don't really right. see that happening but the other thing is is you know we don't pressure test these before we send them through the the porting machine which we, we probably could do that but you know we we get into pattern failures of that we don't have very many problems so right. you know why do it if it's right. going to just cost you time and labor but you know we could potentially find maybe an intake port or something like that that has a crack in it very uncommon again like i said but we're just making sure that all the plugs all the factory freeze plugs there's some intake stuff you know he's right, he's plugged all here. this stuff here under this intake yep and making sure that all that stuff doesn't leak and that there's not anything crazy happening we'll let it sit there and submerge and we'll get a flashlight and we'll look in here you know we can tip it back and forth and you you'd see really really small bubbles you, you almost have to kind of watch for them because right you know they're, they're really really small and another thing too uh sometimes air will go places that water won't right you know what i mean so sometimes you could have a crack like we've never let anything go through that is cracked yeah so you're being over critical but, of yourself yeah but right. but uh, but sometimes there's there's instances where you know you could have a crack that maybe leaks air or something and water won't leak through it but that one looks like a winner to me yeah i'd say she's good all righty day two let's go see how the cylinder head's coming on the uh, cummins boat What's up, Merlin? Not much, man. Coming to see how that cylinder head's coming. Yeah, we're about ready to start putting it together now. We're on day two here. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of hours goes into this thing. Yeah, huh? we're, we're about like 12 hours, 12 man hours into this, not counting the four to five hours of loading and unloading into the CNC machine and running through that program. So, uh, Brighton's just checking the valves got, out right here. Got Brighton up here, yeah. putting it together. I'll... These are our custom uh, performance valves that we run in these. They got a nice night riding on them. Uh, they're just a custom valve and so what are you doing here with this little tool you're actually so this you're checking year, a couple of things right so this here's my standard 12 valve valve here and so i set my gauge to zero and so i'm basically making sure that from the factory because they don't come a hundred percent from the factory all the time all the time i'm making we're sure just double checking checking what the other manufacturers are doing and I, I don't like anything over a half a thou over so, so we Half try to keep a it is tight. Yeah, we try to tight keep tolerance. We try to keep keep it all the you know keep them together. And, I mean, <clears throat> for example, the manufacturer that we use on these valves for about two and a half years now. I, I can't even tell you how many. Maybe five thousand valves we've we've bought and produced. Okay. So this he's is gonna, a, he's making sure all the parts are up to our snuff here to put them in your cylinder head. So this is it. This is awesome, man. This is beautiful. And this was uh, one of the processes I, I, I showed them machining back there. So this is a top hat type seal. Normally like. these just had a clip on seal and occasionally that will come up here and just bounce up and down and it will leak a lot of oil here and oil consumption will come from this. So this top hat, the spring will actually retain that top hat down plus it gives you a little more shim on your spring. Right. Very, uh, and I don't know if you've, Got to see this. This one's cleaned up, but these ports are huge on this thing. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty. They're nice and smooth, and they're ready for some exhaust That's and air to roll through it for sure. Ready to make horsepower. Uh -huh. Cool. Well, I'm gonna set this thing up here so yeah, that I'll can let you guys have at it. Watch you put this thing you together. Can, uh, okay. I, I got to show this right here. So. Oh, yeah. So he's putting rods here. These are these are the performance ones, right? These yeah. will get ARP bolts. These ones will get ARP bolts. So you put them together, you torque them to spec, then you check them for roundness and trueness, and make sure they're fit to go on to have bushings put in them. Correct? Yep. Oh 
Oh yeah, look at them pretty bolts. So he's got all these rods. Now I'm just brushing out the guides just to make sure there's make sure there's no, no anything in no there. No possible crud. So the last thing it was uh, actually the fire ring. Okay. So right here. So surface is cut, then fire ring. The surface is cut, and then the seats are cut, and then we fire ring. And those have nothing to do with how it seals or anything, obviously. So then we pressure test it. So we pressure test it before all. Right, before you go any further. And now I'll just go through and put some oil through there. So this is your assembly, initial assembly? Yep. This stuff is some thick oil. Looks like 250 weight uh, hub oil. What is it? It's a, it's HVL uh, Pennsylvania grade. Oh yeah. So, you know why they call it Pennsylvania grade, right? Uh -uh. There's a difference in crude oils. This is when I would check the depths and make sure they're just, I check them when they come off the machine, but just, again, I would check them to make sure they're about where I set them. So our exhausts are a little bit lower than our intakes, but I had to, I had to clean up the intakes and it took a little bit more for them to come out, so. Perfect. Should be all good there. And another thing is some, I mean, I'm pretty picky. So sometimes I'd be like, oh, if this, I try to keep my cylinders kind of the same and on a 12 right. valve, it's a lot different. Yeah. The valves are in, now we guys, we're gonna put the seal on. So I'm just gonna put a little bit more oil on the guides. So that will actually get trapped under the seal and that will actually stay with it for break in and beyond. Right, and mostly I do this is so that when you put the seals on, it doesn't go on scrape easy. all yep. your rubber out of them. Yeah, because the seal still actually fits onto the stem, because it seals both places, because these do fill up with oil. Right, oh yeah. They fill up with oil, and I basically just, just so that they yeah. have to go on nice and easy. Um, Let me find our little little guy here that you put around the yep. valve. Seal so installer. Yeah, so you don't back up your thing and press those on just like that. I basically just set, I'll put one spring in there and I'll set my gauge to where it reads 100 pounds. Okay. And then I'll just make sure they all read 100 pounds there's not any so, of them. So you don't have any weak ones. Right. Because I have seen it before that, I mean, you might have one out of a thousand, but yeah. one will come and it won't be, it'll be defective. all brand new? No. These are, uh, those are basically those are, checked and reconditioned and... Yep. I've never ever seen a keeper break or a retainer. 
the stock retainer and keeper is good for 3,000 horsepower. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Most of the time I've seen retainer failures is when people are screwing around and they take like, I don't know what degree that is, but they'll take a seven degree and go to a nine degree mm -hmm. and they're trying to use fit and finish and they right. And that's it. Wow. Ready to put her in the box ship it to Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Yeah. Hell yeah. Sweet. It's awesome. Okay. So we just got the cylinder head loaded up. <laughs> I appreciate it. No problem, man. Okay, hey, so uh, you're going to go down and get that thing running? Yeah. We're going to go down there and see what we can push the limit to on that thing. Let's see if you can water ski I'll behind water ski it. behind it. Bring your gas. Okay, let's do it. All righty. Thanks, All right. Dustin. See ya. Just rolling into Glendale, Utah. We go see my cousin Paul. We're gonna drop off this motor for his son Landon. And uh, probably get some lunch. I don't know. We'll see, maybe we'll go find some trouble to get into. Just like usual, junk everywhere. Looks like he's got a new ball court. That's pretty awesome. Let's go see what's going on around here. Are you lost? I took a wrong turn somewhere. Hey, you'll end up anywhere if you take wrong turns in this area. How are you, sweetheart? Good, how are you? I'm good. I thought what, that, How when, did when he I get you to work down here? Well, you know, I thought you, I thought you took those chains he off. Blind and I gave in. <laughs> wow, this is a pretty cool setup. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah. A little bit of everything. Been putting up some of the stuff. People say. Oh, I like that. Isn't that nice? Who made that? Some guy made that for Paul. I thought it turned out really nice. Yeah, that's neat. Great, great memory for him. That's cool. Yeah, lots of fun stuff. So if We're you want to get a t-shirt, you need to yeah. stop in and see whoever's working in here. I don't think It'll Aunt be Lolly me. will be here most of the time, but she's here some of the time. Yeah. So. Okay, I unloaded my junk, and uh, Paul's happy with his new Hi, motor okay. program. Thank See ya. You. Yep. Thank Thanks, you. Well, uh, we got many more of them for you to build. I'll so. let you know when I get my boat running. You and your brother can come down, go for a ride. Maybe we'll go water skiing. Um, I'm on. I'll All right, it. man. See ya. Thank you. Thanks for watching.